Welcome to interview with a backpacker, weekly on Spotify and iTunes. <laughs> okay. This is it, guys. Interview with a... <laughs> the light is already working shitty. <laughs> This is it, guys. Interview with a backpacker, Season 2. We are finally there. Uh, you waited a long time. Also, this uh, season, we have five new guests. And uh, I'm, happily, I'm happy to announce the first superstar, this bunch of muscles. Otto, here you go. <laughs> Otto, where are you from? Um, so I... Uh... <laughs> I'm very I professional with the light. Um, yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Otto. I uh, grew up in Morocco, lived in the US. I hold adult life, so I'm a dual citizenship. You see, I'm already messing up. I'm a dual citizen of the US and Morocco. And uh, how long are you traveling for? Like, you, I met you in Cairns. Are you actually a backpacker, or how would you describe yourself? Um, I, I think about myself as a world traveler. Um, mm. I have technically been homeless um, since end of 2017 so I've been traveling full time for the last three years um, I most of the time I would rent a Airbnb or an apartment I'll stay in hostels sometimes I'll stay in hotels it really depends on where I am um, who I'm with the kind of experience I'm looking I try to mix it up and so to answer your question it's been three years traveling full time but I've I've always loved travel and I've always done a lot of it my whole life. Nice. Okay. Thank you for that short introduction. So, also for you, around 10 questions. Okay. Question number one. You have no idea. Like, Otto has no idea what I'm going to ask him. Um, maybe he's gonna laugh at the first one. So, what's one odd thing you're traveling with? Something weird, something special, something unique? Something weird I'm traveling with. Um... So I'm, I'm thinking through it because nothing jumps into my mind. I am somebody who has traveled enough where I travel with a small backpack um, that's 40 liters and I will I don't check it in when I fly. I will just take it as a carry-on. And so everything that I have in my bag serves a specific purpose. So a lot of my clothes are there because um, I only carry the things that I need. Um, and so I'm trying to think... Oh, okay, okay. I'll say something weird I'm traveling with right now. Um, okay, little story. Uh, back in October, I traveled with my mom uh, for about a month and a half. We traveled in different parts of Asia. And then she wanted to buy something, uh, basically some hair product for herself. And I'm trying to think, how did I end up with that? I don't know if we ordered it online. It didn't get here on time before she left back. But I have two hair sprays or some hair product for my mom that she didn't get or did she buy them and she didn't have space in her bag i don't remember what the story is but my mom has this two hair product that she really likes i have them in my bag for almost 10 months now so you're carrying your mom's I am hair carrying product my, like two brand new things that she bought or that we ordered okay. online that i have and then Uh, she has told me multiple times I can get rid of them, but you know, I don't know. They're, they're for my mom, so I just keep them there. And but to be whenever honest, I get there, I'll, I'll, I'll you, give it to To be honest, your, your hair look very shiny and healthy, so maybe, maybe you. Maybe I should use it. May, yeah. No, no, maybe you're already using them and not. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all natural. <laughs> I see. Um, okay, question number two. Uh, who's the strongest person you know? The strongest person I know. So the first thing that comes to mind when you say stronger, the strongest, like a lot of people think about stronger physically, but my, the first thing I think about is who's the strongest person emotionally, mentally? Um, who's the strongest person I know? I guess I have to think about somebody that has gone through a lot of emotional experiences, a lot of hardship, and then has come through um, in a just much stronger out of the uh, luck on the other side hmm who is the strongest person I know you see you see when you get this question ahead of time you have a chance to think about them 
the fact that you're asking them on the spot. There's 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 a point where I'm going to interrupt and tell about the strongest person I know. <laughs> and in uh in, in like I, I want it to be that way. I want people to yeah, it's act, good. No, act spontaneously it's, uh, and not be able I, I, to I like I like the format of yeah. it because it, it, it like I've had so I'm I'm I guess I'm gonna think out loud mm. so that we can kinda hear the process that's going to my mind. Um so I can also give you an example for the sure. strongest person I know. Uh, it's it's funny you said your mom, because in my case it's definitely my mom. She had to uh, she yeah. had to uh, make two, yeah, two boys that got into trouble very very often. Uh, she had yeah. to raise them as a single mom, and uh, there were moments where I couldn't see it as a child. But now I, I I can definitely tell where my mom must be for herself and thought, what the fuck am I doing here? Like what's going on? And me and my brother we did a lot of shit like stuff like where you think for example one time a teacher like uh, obviously i'm having a little bit darker skin and w one time i got like a advice in germany that's like a punishment a teacher sends you if you're doing something very wrong and uh, then the explanation for why i got the advice the, the punishment yeah. is uh, because i called another guy nigger and uh -huh. she was thinking like, are you absolutely stupid? Like, look at your face. You, you, yeah, you yeah. that's stupid. The real story is someone else called me nigger. The feet teacher thought I was saying that. I but, uh, yeah, my mom didn't believe me. My mom thought, yeah, this kid is stupid. This kid doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. So that's, for example, a story. That's a story yeah, in my it, case. It's funny that you mentioned your mom because as I was thinking towards, mm -hmm. um, we, the question before we, yeah. we talked about my mom. And so it kind of was on top of my mind and, um, she, she came to mind, which I, I was just trying to think, uh, basically what I was trying to go through is different chapters of my life and trying to think, who are the people that have been a big part of it, the people mm -hmm. who have really contributed to it. But that's actually, that you know, my mom came to my mind as well. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, she's an amazing person in many different ways. Um, and we went through a, a hardship a few years ago. Um, I don't mean to uh, change the vibe of the... Mm -hmm of this uh, exchange, but um, my brother passed away a few years ago and being able to see how she's been able to go through that, uh, it's never easy to lose a son um, or a brother. Or, uh, in, it's always a challenge that way and being able to see how she's been able to, you know, just to get through it and uh, and deal with it is, uh, is something that was uh, very impressive. And she's always been somebody that, you know, people will go to and she'll always be there for them, being able to, um, regardless of what happens, yeah. she always keeps... Uh, her heads up and uh, always just smiles at whatever life throws her away. I don't want to comment that. Um, <laughs> it's which is very positive. I really appreciate you sharing that. Of course. Um, so as you as you doing your movements, as you as you travel through the country, there's uh, there's some stuff um, backpackers don't do. Yeah. What's something? What's an absolutely no go for you? Something that backpackers don't do. Some, so just make I want to make sure I understand the gist of the question. So yeah. what is it something that I personally don't do, or something that I see other people not doing? I, uh, for me, I would like to uh, like you to answer something you personally don't do, uh -huh. but uh, you can interpret all of the questions the way you want them to. Like there's no wrong and no sure, right. Sure, of course. Um, I know. I know. Um, you and I, Dyson, have talked about it a bunch, uh, but I um, I really enjoy having a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and uh, something that I don't do is I don't eat shitty food. Um, and so I spend a lot of time uh, making sure that everything that I put in my body is something that my body uh, needs, something that that's actually a positive um, item that I may, you know, whether it's nutrients, whether it's protein, or just being very mindful about what I eat. And it's interesting because you know, when you're traveling so much, you meet a lot of different people. And especially when you spend time in a hostel, you get to meet people across different age groups. You meet people from different parts of the world. And it's always uh, incredible to see how people sustain themselves and really like, um, uh, as just food that I wouldn't eat. Like just people tend to eat a lot of um, carbs and uh, a lot of unhealthy, uh, like they basically on unhealthy diet. They don't eat a lot of vegetables. And personally, something that I, I don't do is eat that stuff. I would rather just take the time to go grab food uh, from the store in terms of getting vegetables, making healthy meals, um, and being able to feed myself. I just find that mm. when I'm able to do that, I my body functions the mm. best. I'm able to mentally be more present, mm. physically be um, 
able to do more activities, be able to exercise more, etc. So that's that's something, that's something I realize about you as well. Like the first time I met you, uh, I could even tell like your skin is is way more healthy than other people's skin. You can tell on on the diet that people have uh, how how they look like and uh, uh, how how what they eat, like uh, how they look like. You can tell what they're probably eating. And uh, I met you as a very sporty person. I think the first time we met each other was playing football, and we had yeah. like small tackles again. She eats each other. And I was he's like, a good player. Yeah. He's a good player. I have to admit. I I am. You. <laughs> 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 all right um so where we go next what's your worst travel experience my worst travel experience um, i i have to say that i i feel very lucky that um i i think over the last few years i've been to i don't know dozens of countries uh i've got to travel in different parts of the world um, a lot of times, one of, some of my favorite travels are in places uh, that a lot of people don't go to. I've had the chance to go to places like Iraq. I've got a chance to go to Bangladesh. I got to spend time in Central America, in Honduras, or yeah. in Nicaragua. And, and a lot of times when I'm going to these places, the first reaction that people have is, oh my God, like it's so scary, it's so yeah. dangerous. Um, and for me... Travel is all about human connection, being able to um, connect with others and relate with others. Um, I also feel that I feel I've, I'm very blessed because everywhere I go, I get a chance to meet incredible people. And overall, like, I just have an incredible list of memories and stories to share around just how amazing people are yeah. and being able to discover these new cultures. And um, I mean, that's that's what fuels my travel. I can't think about like one specific experience where I'm like, so you that try to keep the positive one. stuff. You want to. Yeah, you're traveling to have something. It's like you know things happen, right? Like you can be somewhere and you're expecting to go somewhere, and um, you the plan changes, or you have a reservation and yeah. you arrive there, and the hotel where you're staying is booked out. Yeah. Or like, but then it's like, okay, well that happened. For me, that's like. I never let those things impact me. Yeah. I always look at it on the positive side and say, look at that as an opportunity to do something different. Is that um, something, sorry to interrupt you, but is that something you had to learn as well? Like, because for me, when, when a booking is, uh, you are in a different country, you try to book that hotel and, uh, suddenly your booking is not, uh, yeah, the hotel is fully booked. Now I got to a point finally. Uh, it would have stressed me out. Like, uh, now it doesn't. I had to learn it, but. Yeah. Uh, Maybe, is it something you always had? Like, is it is it just the character, or do you think you had to learn it at one point? I, I think I think it's a mix of um, kind of personality and uh, kind of life experiences. Um, I feel like at a young age, one of the very defining experiences for uh, for me was uh, playing tennis competitively as a teenager. As a teenager, and ultimately, that has helped build a certain level of discipline and being able to kind of deal with whatever is thrown your way. Um, you are a coach and you build kind of your mental strength yeah. at a young age. I know you played sports as well. Yeah. And so you've shared a similar experience. And so I feel like that builds up your your ability to deal with whatever comes your way. Because, you know, you can be in a match and you're losing. And so do you lose your focus? Do yeah. you start um, wasting your time uh, worrying about that last point you just yeah. lost? Or do you get present again and you focus on what's happening now and you say, all right, well, okay, what's next? How do we how do we build up from them? So I always feel like I've always had that kind of attitude. It doesn't matter if, you know, I, I'm going through a hard time because I have a lot of homework when I was in school yeah. or, you know, once I have a job, maybe I have mm -hmm. more tasks than I'm able to, to deal with. And so I feel like that's something that with experience I was able to um, deal with more effectively. And then, you know, you, you you kind of learn with time to put things in perspective where as long as you're healthy, as long as, you know, you're able to... Like, we, we're very blessed to have everything, That's right? True. Like, we have our sight, we have our health, we're not... We're able to walk. Like, it's, like yeah. it's the little things. And then sometimes being able to just sit down and say, all right, well, I'm appreciative of yeah. having the chance to be able to, you know, just be here yeah. and be around with people and be able to explore new places and it's we i feel like we're very blessed uh, in so many different ways that's a very good way to think of <laughs> maybe i should have asked the best travel experience that was um uh, the worst travel experience <laughs> something you know i, I like i, I want to okay let me see if i can find you like 
something. I have another question okay, for you. For I, I already like your answer a lot. What's the most expensive investment you made while traveling? Um, the most expensive investment. Um, okay, so just to be technically correct, um, it, it, yes. an investment is something that, that, that generates dividends versus an expense is something that you know you spend and you don't get an ROI. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I don't understand you're asking anything, but I like the way you talk. <laughs> no, so it's funny because I was actually having a conversation with a friend a couple of days ago and... Uh, the conversation was, oh, I think I want to make an investment on this. And I was like, yeah, I, don't, I think we were talking about your iPhone or headphones. Yeah, okay. And then it was like, oh, I think it would be a good investment. And then my reaction was like, no, you, know, you want to spend money on that and you just want to feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. So I think the, the gist of your question is, what is probably an expensive item that you yeah. carry um, that is something that was a great investment? And so for me, I am a minimalist. Yeah. I before traveling, I used to live in a house, yeah. and I had all the things you can imagine, right? Like furnished house. You had like a backyard. Um, you know, I had a basement with yeah. all the sports equipment you can you can imagine. You know, yeah. from the skis to the soccer to the golf clubs. Like I, I love being active, so I had yeah. all kinds of sports equipment yeah. to go do whatever you know the activity of the day is. And then over time, I just go go rid of everything. And the idea was, you know, what are the things that matter? And for me, the things that matter are the people the experience do you miss those stuff i don't I, i i basically even so when i travel i just have the minimal things yeah that have a certain utility yeah. and so when it comes to clothes like i can get basically i can lose everything as long as i have my passport yeah. and i'm even okay well funny stories yeah. i lost my passport last year and so even that's disposable like yeah. um and so to be frank as long as i have my health and i'm able to i have enough money that i can afford to do the things that i can do yeah. then that's and even like even if i'm like what's the most i what's the most expensive thing i have probably my laptop because i it's yeah. again it's something that i use to be able to generate income at yeah. times or i'm able to use for communication or for entertainment or for whatever else yeah. that's probably the most expensive item i have uh besides that like, like you can take everything that i have like i you know it's, it's disposable like the, sure i'll be like yeah. okay Great, I lost my clothes yeah. or whatever. Like, okay, all right, well, I'll go. And, yeah. and, and it's not that even like, I care about like things like, yeah. I like simple things. You know how much this shirt is? Yes, I know. You do. You know how much these shorts are? Yes, you do. Yeah. And the idea was like, I just need something to go exercise. I actually don't like when clothes mm. have brands on them. Unless the brand is paying me, I'm not yeah. putting I'm not putting a logo. And I think that's I a to. really, really cool thing about you. To Thank be you. honest, when I left Germany, I had problems not having a brand on my cloth because I like having a small symbol, like even if it's Vans or whatever. We, all, we all been through it. Like it's yeah. not that I, I, I used to think yeah. that way as well. Like but we then all... I saw you beach volleyball <laughs> playing and I, I, I knew like uh, there's like you can buy like it's way, way more functional, the stuff you're Absolutely. wearing. Like I'm destroying my cloth playing beach volleyball and that's something very, very cool. Um, I have another cool question for you. Yes. Um, I give an example for myself as well. Um What's your superpower? For me, I think I'm very good at copying. Like I see uh, what other people do and if I find it's effective or if I think it has a good effect on my life, I'll just copy it and I'm very good at copying it. Mm -hmm. So what could be your superpower? What do you think my superpower is? I think your superpower is that you, 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 you tell yourself you want to do it that or that way and then you do it. I think there's no there's no left there's no right there's a straight way and you have probably already planned planned the way uh, to your to your way, the, the the thing you're aiming for and then you go that way. So I think you're someone that is very very ambitious and successful in what he's doing. That's what I think is your superpower. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. I'll make a comment on that and then I'll. I'll I'll try to think about what I all I believe my superpower is. Um, so yes, I agree with you that I've always been very disciplined. Yeah. That if I set my mind to something, um, I will get it done. Yeah. And yes, we're gonna hit obstacles along the way, but you know I'll do my best to get there. And at least I want to know that I've I've made the best effort. Yeah. Um, there is um, there's somebody that I knew a while back, and yeah. one thing she used to say, she actually had given a speech, yeah. um, and that stuck with me. It's like uh, be the best. Um, you can be, and I think that's something um, that that kind of stuck with me around, like, mm. if I'm going to do something, I want to make sure that I'm giving it my 100%, and even if I fail, yeah. I would at least need to know, personally, it doesn't matter what other people think, 
I need to know that I've at least I've tried 100%. Mm. I've tried what I wanted to do and I've and I feel good about the effort I put in. Mm. If I know that I could have done better and I, I didn't, mm. like I can't feel good about myself. So I think that's something that I can um, agree with. However, what I disagree mm. with is um, the success part because I failed a lot. And there are many things where, yes, I like to be ambitious. I like to set high goals. And I fail. Like, especially on the business side, like I've tried to launch multiple companies and mm. it's by design, like, the chances, the odds are against you. The chances yeah. of success are low. Yeah. And I actually like that. Because, you know, if everybody who tries something actually accomplishes it, then yeah. it's it's too easy. But it's, um, you know, I, I used to have a job. I used to have a career. And um, I, I, I decided to leave all of that behind yeah. to be able to say, all right, well, I want to build my own company. I want to build yeah. my own startup. And knowing that I was going to fail. And I've actually... <laughs> failed many times mm. but every time you fail you learn from yeah. it and you get better and so for me just a matter of time i know that eventually i'm going to be able to hit a home run and mm. um all those failures kind of pay dividends and i think they've made me a better human being yeah. um but i disagree that everything that i do is <laughs> successful um so back to the question of uh superpower i think that's something that. Um, at a very young age, I've always been very uh, introspective around being able to say, like, what do I need to work on? How do I get better? Like, and, and I feel like that's some, something that, that's, that has fueled me. And the version of me that you see now is very different from the version of me five years ago, ten years ago. And it's probably going to be very different from the one, you know, five or ten years from now. Um, and a lot of it has to do with, okay, like, how can I be better? Like, how can I be the best version of myself? How can I be the best human being I can be for others? Um, and... The superpower and ultimately where I channel my time mm. has to do with what drives me, what gets me excited. And I think over time, a lot of things that were driving me were mm. very egocentric. Like, yeah. I wanted to be this or that. I wanted yeah. to accomplish this because ultimately that was fueling my my uh, my ego. Like, yeah. I wanted to be the successful entrepreneur. Yeah. I wanted to be on the cover of that magazine. Yeah. I wanted to... We talked about exercise a lot together. It's like, I wanted to exercise to look mm -hmm. a certain way because ultimately it makes me feel good compared to based on what others are going to think of me yeah. over time what others think is not as important to me as it used to be mm -hmm. and it's all about how i feel about myself and so a lot of times i do things for myself and i exercise for myself so I, it's healthy to be the best version of myself so my i guess my superpower is either you can say it's this ability to iterate yes. and be able to always uh, seek the best. That's what I was um, trying to ask. That's uh... and I feel like that's because that ultimately fuels everything else. Mm. Because I, I feel like I have certain capabilities that yeah. other. A lot of times when I think yeah. about superpowers or whatever, like yeah. a lot of it, you just have to ask others and say, yeah. "What do you think?" My and then yeah. and then whatever you hear consistently mm. means that's something that you do well yeah. that other can benefit from. And um, one one area that I personally have been focusing on and uh, um, I know that creates a lot of value yeah. and it aligns with giving meaning to what I do is creating community, connecting yeah. with others, being able to bring people together. That's true. Um, and so yeah. I feel like that's an area where maybe I haven't spent as much time yeah. doing in the past, yeah. but now I try to make uh, an effort to try and create that wherever I can. So yeah. I think we've, we've done a lot of things together, whether it's about having dinners yeah. with friends, yeah. uh, being able to, you know, organize some barbecues to bring people together, being able to organize a lot soccer of, games. It's a lot of uh, different life situations where you find yourself. Sometimes they are unknown, but I, I feel uh, you have the ability to always, like, don't fall off the border. You all, you always stand there and you're always doing a good job wherever, and ever, wherever, wherever you get thrown at. Like, uh, yeah, thank you. I hope that's maybe your spirit animal is a chameleon, like, <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> which is a nice animal, to be honest. Like, can, they have uh, a know, 360 I, degree view. I don't know yeah, much animals having that. That's actually, I've never thought about that as a spirit animal, but I feel like there are a couple of attributes that can be very interesting. Mm -hmm. The ability to look around, I feel like I tend to observe a lot yeah. and really, you know, watch what's around me, being aware of what's around. That's something that comes in handy, but also being able to adapt. That's actually something that. I've, I've gotten at a very young age where... Um, that was the word I was looking for. Sorry yeah, to interrupt sorry. you. I tried no, to explain. But... No, <laughs> yeah. um, it, I, I, I often joke with friends that... Um, uh, a side note. I know you probably you like little stories. So um, I've been traveling for, for a few years now and my friends are always uh, wondering about am I... Uh, like, do I... Like, how come I'm traveling to all these places? How can I afford this lifestyle? Yeah. All of that. And it's like, are you working for the CIA? And sometimes I'll just joke, yeah. yes, I'm able to adapt everywhere yeah. I go. So maybe. 
That's a pretty good one. So, we're coming to an end. Um, after this last game for you, I'm asking everyone. So, try to answer as fast as possible in okay. only one word. All right. Five quick words for Otto. Number one. Let's do it. Video game. The first one. The first word. The I first word. Uh, Ma comes. Mario. Sport. Tennis. Drugs. None. Government. <laughs> US. United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> home? Okay. Perfect. Otto. Thanks a lot. I'm going to... <laughs> well done. You Guys, just if you would mess, see yes. how, how this looks like, it just... It's very... I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm it's okay, don't worry about it. We'll clean it up. What, what kind of stuff is in your bin? <laughs> I'm joking. <Yeah. laughs> okay, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Otto. That was amazing. Um, I have, I have to read out the outro because I'm very, very, very bad. So, thanks guys for joining uh, Season 2. I hope you like it. First episode with Otto was kind of nice. Um, kind of nice? Kinda I, nice. Thought, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good as well. The light wasn't perfect. I'm so sorry, man. I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I like to pick on you. I like to pick on you. <laughs> so, um, where's actually the part I wanted to read? Yeah, stay updated. Uh, every week there's going to be a new episode. And yeah, you can listen to this podcast on Spotify and iTunes. And if you watch it on YouTube, you also have a video for that. That's the first time. That's pretty new. So I hope you, you, you will do that. That's a new feature we have. Follow me on Instagram. Stay tuned for next week. And yeah, that's it. Enjoy, guys. Thanks for joining this episode of Interview with a Backpacker. Weekly on Spotify and iTunes. Subscribe to stay tuned. Stay tuned in general, bro. Futuristic synthesizer driven soundtrack to androgyny. 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 I'm the Wave 103. Camo. The line. The line forms in the rear. Camo. Camo. The philosophy of denim. The integrity of anatomy. Camo jeans. Our name is on your lips. What is life for? Camo. Tight. Hot and great in a crisis, like you. Camu fit. They hug you close, even when you're in torment. They're specially cut to show off what you've got. They give you meaning. Mm, Camu. Push that rock, Sisyphus. Read our lips. I'm in pain. Camu jeans are tight. Soak them in the bathtub before you pull them on. Camu jeans. When the line forms for your rear, be elated for a moment. Camu.